The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Okay, awesome. Hey, thanks so much for being here. Um, I, I'm really excited about this technology, so um, hopefully I'll get you too. So, but I will say, this is some disclaimers, right? This is a basic talk, and for you early geeks, I don't mean basic programming, right? I mean, just basic elementary stuff. Um, it's intro, it's all about getting started. Um, I mean, this is a Linux conference, so I don't know exactly how many are all programmers and how many are sysadmins, so I don't know, but obviously the hello world is the normal, hey, is my tool chain working? Is this thing on? Can I make something happen kind of program? And I'm definitely gonna show you that, but I'm taking the idea of hello world a little bigger and taking you into the, the world of Arduino a little bit so you can see a little further and get an idea of where you can get stuff because, you know, the Arduino by itself is kind of boring. So, all right. Um, that said, I'm a Perl guy. You may have looked at my shirt and guessed that. Um, but this talk could almost be Ruby. It could almost be Python, Erlang, Bash, Haskell. You know, I don't care, right? Um, so, and, and that'll make more sense here in a little bit why I don't care. Um, yeah. So, um, how many of you have been to the Arduino website, right? Do you know what it is? Awesome. How many of you could say Arduino? Yeah, that's good. Um, how many of you used to have trouble saying this? <laughs> yeah, one guy. All right, all right. Um, anyway, Pearl, yeah. So, um, hello world. Um, so this isn't just code, right? This is, this is, my proverbial placeholder things with stuff, right? Um, it's hello world, it's hello Arduino, hello stuff, hello ideas, and just plain, hey, welcome everybody. Um, so I'm gonna try to let you know where you can get some stuff, because if you don't have stuff, well, what do you have? You're stuffless, and that's just not good. Um, so maybe get a few ideas percolating for you. Um, hopefully you have way more than I have, um, and can go out and rule the world, but we'll see. Um, so just a little about me, right? I've been hacking way too long um, from the Apple II days in rural Arkansas. Uh, 76324, comma 264, ring a bell to anybody? Remember me on CompuServe? Anybody? Anyway. Um, so back in those days, if you'd have told me that six wires and 10 lines of code, I could have taken a potentiometer and gone, doot, doot, and the motor would have gone, doot, doot, I never would have left my room. Right, I would, I would still be living at home with my parents um, and just hacking on stuff, right? Just mail me cool stuff and I'll keep hacking. And um, so here's the code for this. This is straight from the Arduino IDE. Um, I'm not gonna go crazy into this necessarily, um, but I just kinda wanna let you see what the IDE looks like. Um, the Arduino is in C++ pretty much. Um, some hand waving may apply. But anyway, so you pull in servo, you get your object, tell it what pin your potentiometer is on. Um, the little tricky bit here is where you're mapping values across two different ranges because the um, potentiometer reads from <coughs> zero to without, or from zero to 1,023 and the servo motor is from zero to 179. So you just map values on each other so you kind of normalize them. That's kind of a handy function. So then when you turn, it goes pretty much where you want. And then of course you can turn the knob way faster than the thing can move, right? So there's a delay in there so it has a chance to play catch up. But anyway, this is what's called the, the knob sketch completely from the IDE. So if you go buy yourself a servo motor and an Arduino and a, and a, and a pot, then you can do this and just pff, go to town. Um, wow, and uh, I tried to actually make the code where you could see a little better and it looked better in the IDE than it did otherwise. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so if I had stayed in my room, I never would have done this, right? So there would have been some good things with me still living at home, right? I wouldn't have made my pilgrimage when I used to be a Microsoft guy. That was a few decades ago. You can probably tell by the sexy legs. Um, so anyway, so now what am I doing, right? Well, I've been running Pittsburgh Pearl Workshop for years. Um, 
Pro conferences. I do Ignite. Worked on a Maker Fair in Pittsburgh. Um, I'm an evangelist for all the cool stuff, right? Um, and, and this was kind of something that's come out of this conference for me is also a bit of a product, which is different than tech. Um, but that's cool. Um, because FOSS has some of the best technology, right? But some of our product is sometimes lacking. And I'm not going to get into arguments about that. But it's true, and I'm right. And you're probably wrong if you think different. Anyway, um, but we also don't always have the best marketing. And that's why I'm here. I'm definitely not part of the Arduino core. I'm not part of the Arduino team in any way. I'm a user. And, I'm, and I love it. And I want you to as well. So um, some of you are probably already playing with them. And if not, uh, you will be, or at least I think you should be. So what is it, right? Oh, um, sorry, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I don't know, th weird things happen. So um, by the way, if you're ever scheduling conferences, don't schedule um, against NFL playoff games, which happened at the last time I gave this talk. That just sucks. So Arduino language is based on C and C++. It links against the AVR, libc, and allows the use of any of its own functions, right? So um, that's about as geeky down in the tool chain as I would get. Um, so it's a microcontroller. It's an IDE. It's a culture, it's an, it's, it is open source, um, and of course, it's amazing magic, or it wouldn't be interesting. Um, whoa, wait a minute, well, this is IDE business. I like my make, right? I like my Vim and my Emacs. Um, but um, right now, I would definitely encourage you to use the IDE. Um, there is certainly, if, if you're more advanced and you want some you know, pains and you want to solve the wrong problem and you know, do some yak shaving, by all means, um, there are make files out there. Go play. Um, but I do know that they're working on making that tool chain way better so people can use the command line. Um, oh, that was important. So uh, when I said that it was open source, um, many of you are certainly familiar with open source in this room, or at least I certainly hope so. But you may be you're more familiar with it on the open source software side, not the hardware side. So there is an open source hardware definition now that happened out of the last Maker Faire in New York, which is really in the developer summit, which is really cool stuff. I'm not going to go into that. It's just FYI. You probably want to check it out if you really get into this stuff. Um, just as a quick thanks to our sponsors, right? Awesome. Um, Scotch is good. So go download the, uh, the eucalyptus stuff and go register at opensource.com. Thanks for the Scotch. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of different boards, right? So Arduino isn't just one thing. It's a bunch of stuff. Um, and I've got examples. Some of you already got to see some of them. Um, others can come up after the talk and take a look. Um, so the Dewey Milanove thing, so kind of the flagship product is the Arduino Dewey Milanove, except it's now the Uno because they changed some of the tech specs, made it bigger, faster, stronger, and they changed its name because we in America can't say Dewey Milanove, and even I get close, I, I butcher it. Um, so we're the Uno now, so you'll see both of those. They're fairly interchangeable until they're not, um, so... Um, a few places to get stuff, right? So there's SparkFun, there's Adafruit, Makershed, ShieldList, lots more places that I could put here. I'm kind of playing favorites, but I don't mean to. I just don't want to give you like this crazy list. Um, so what Nathan Seidel does at SparkFun is all that really cool surface mount technology stuff that most of you probably don't have surface mount technology at home to deal with. Um, he puts it on through hole or on headers and shields so you can actually like use cool accelerometers and stuff. And then they charge you quite a bit of money, even he admits that. Um, but it's cool. Um, Adafruit really makes cool stuff. I actually invited uh, Lady Ada to come to one of my conferences right before she became a rock star. You may have seen her on the cover of Wired Magazine two issues ago. That was kind of weird um, and awesome. Uh, she's also the one who put out the Connect bounty to try to open source Connect, which is cool. Uh, so lots of cool stuff. Shieldlist is pretty interesting. So Shieldlist is trying to catalog all the really cool shields and what pins they use because some shields, as you stack them up, um, are using pins that are already being used. So you have to reconfigure things or you just can't use two shields together in any reasonable way. Shieldlist kind of helps you sort that stuff out. Um, so since this definitely is a Linux conference, um, I definitely want to encourage everyone to try to go to the wiki and install the Arduino stuff from the instructions there and where they don't work. Please try to fix them. Um, so the Nano is small, who would have guessed? The Mini is a little bigger. Lilypad is kind of a special niche. It's for um, 
people who are wanting to actually make like wearable stuff, right? So one of the common things that people are doing with the Arduino in this space is building a bike jacket that actually has blinkers with soft circuits in the sleeves. So as you turn, you just hit the soft circuit on each sleeve and the blinker of LEDs on the back just comes on, right? Which is really cool. Um, and so the idea is the lily pad is kind of washable. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's made to be more used in fabric. Um, so you can get conductive thread. Like, who knew? I didn't know that long ago that you could get conductive thread and conductive, you know, um, yarn and all kinds of cool stuff. So there's lots of cool stuff out there. The Mega is obviously the, the big daddy. Um, lots more CRO, lots more IO. But the Uno is kind of like the flagshipy product that most people are using. It's around 30 bucks, um, and it's probably the one you want. But as I said, this stuff is open source hardware. So um, there's a guy not too far from me that, I apologize, that's not as clear, but anyway, um, that he does a lot of Occam programmers in the room. Anyone program Occam? Oh, um, so Occam is an old school parallel programming language. Um, and so he actually wrote and built a new Arduino to kind of simulate multi-core stuff, which is cool, called concurrency. So if you're into that, that's kind of cool. Uh, the project they actually do is autonomous flight with an Arduino as a summer project where you control the uh, plane using Occam and an Arduino. I didn't do cool stuff like that in school. But anyway, so some of the shield examples are Ethernet, because let's face it, if something isn't on the internet, it doesn't exist. Um, Telemate is an example of one that lets you do um, composite out, so you can actually put you know, text on the screen from, uh, or text onto a TV screen you know, using composite video. There's uh, different motor shields. You don't always need one, but depending on how many motors and what kind of motor you have, Take a look at the motor shields. Certainly it's nice to know where you are. GPS is good for that. Breathalyzers, because we always kind of need to know how many scotches we had thanks to the vendors last night. Um, certainly there are custom built shields. Um, there's a front one up here called a video game shield that some friends of mine from Pittsburgh made that lets you take up some um, Wii controllers, the Wii Chuck controller, hook them up, uh, and then do, um, and then it also has video out, and they have some examples of like, playing Tetris, so you can play Tetris on your TV with your Arduino using Wii controllers, but then you can expand that and do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so that's, this is what the Telemate looks like. It just fits right on top of your Arduino and goes out to your TV. Um, and this is hard stuff, right? I mean, this, this is how you print something out to your screen once you have, just snap it on, right, and plug it up. Serial print, hello world. Woo, and it goes, right? When I changed this to Hello Benjamin, my son's name, he's seven, he flipped out, right? The TV's got his name on it. He was very excited. Um, and this is straight from their example code, the URL at the bottom. Um, but this is your normal configuration, and this is kind of unfortunate, right? So the Arduino, I have the Dewey Milanova instead of the Uno, I should have changed the slide, but um, so with the Ethernet shield, you're, you're seeing this correct. This isn't some weird optical illusion. The Ethernet shield is usually costing you way more than the actual Arduino itself. But never fear, because geeks are near, right? So people are using DDWirt, and it turns out that a lot of the routers actually have serial on board that's never been used. So you pop them open, and you get out your soldering iron, and you add some um, serial to it, and off you go. Now you've got a whole Linux box sitting there with, connected with an Arduino to do God knows what you want to do. Um, some Googling may apply here, and I would encourage it, because I haven't gotten a project this, like this up yet, but I'm very envious. Um, so anyway, another thing I highly, highly recommend is when you're doing this stuff, if you're just hanging the one Arduino off and you have no I.O. going, you're just kind of playing, no biggie, you don't need a USB hub, you're probably going to be safe. Um, but you can mess some stuff up, right? And usually your computers are kind of expensive, unless it's like mine, it's like a hand-me-down and five years old. But um, throw a USB hub between you and your Arduino and your computer, just to be safe. I don't want you coming back and going, hey, I did something stupid and blew up my computer, and I'm going to blame you. Um, don't do that. Um, so any, any old school Linux people that caught their monitors on fire configuring x86 back in the day? I don't know. I read the warning and it terrified me, but I never caught my monitor on fire. But anyway, so a few of the projects that I kind of am poking on. So uh, I, I built a, a network testing thing for a guy, um, kind of cloud related, but it wasn't really, but it could have been. 
Uh, so we took RJ45 jacks, wired them up for Ethernet, pulled in a, um, pulled in a relay so that we could actually be Bob the backhoe guy, right, and break the physical layer. We're not nicely downing the interface, but we actually are breaking the Ethernet connection and testing the system to see that things fail over and do what you expect. Um, a power reset testing, I was doing some methane gas testing, um, uh, methane gas sensor testing stuff. And so we were constantly rebuilding the code on the equipment, and of course you had to let the pots, or excuse me, the caps all drain, or you wouldn't really get the system in a state that you would want. So waiting five seconds bored me, so I wrote a script to press, you know, when I press the button, it waits five seconds before it brings the system back up. Um, I do a Halloween house tour in Pittsburgh. I've got the, some of that hardware up here, which is using, in this case, wave, file, oh, wave shields. Um, there are AUG and, Vorbi, or AUG and MP3 available, um, but they weren't at the time when I did the project. Uh, but where I am playing wave files and um, starting the wave file based on using a doorbell. Um, I do a lot of toy hacking. Um, I'm toying around with some of this um, DB uh, database drivers for the Internet of Things, where you could do things like, you know, select time and temperature from North America, where those results are not coming from a database, but coming from actual Internet devices scattered out through the Internet. Um, the uh, jQuery, uh, jQuery mobile is really interesting with Restuino. Um, so Restuino lets you do stuff like this, where you load a rest sketch up onto your Arduino, some configuration will apply, but you can hit a URL and you get um, JSON results back, which is really cool, because then you can do stuff like, you know, curl at your Arduino and get stuff back and use stuff like JCut, which is a JSON parser, to get out specific bits of JSON that you want. Cool stuff. Um, jQuery mobile, so to carry the, the potentiometer servo motor a little bit further, um, so jQuery mobile lets you give a slider. You scale your slider from zero to 179. Um, you can replace the pot in there. And then now you're wireless controlling your servo. And it's easy, eh, mostly. But it's pretty darn easy, which is really cool. It doesn't work on my uh, G1, though, which sucks. But it works on my iPhone, which is cool. Um, but anyway, uh, so when, when, when you learn Linux, right, you, you learn that you want to script your problems away, right? You know, small shell scripts to replace people and things, right? So I have one of these, right? You may have one too. Um, and I have a few of these. You may or may not have some of these. But with the problem when you have one of these and two of these is they leave the doors open a lot. So now I'm actually building a system for my basement doors to alert me if both of my basement doors are open at the same time because there's... That, that, the basement door going into the basement and the basement door going to the outside. And it's summer, so they're often both open. Now the cat has an egress, which is not good. So uh, um, this is getting into a bigger project of building in a whole Arduino-based alarm system for my house. But anyway, that's kind of cool stuff. Um, all right, so let's get into a, a few code things and explanations. So I've mentioned already that programs are sketches, but you might have caught that. So programs... In our in Arduino land are sketches. Sketches? Why? So any processing people? Anybody ha hacking on processing? Processing.org? So processing is another project you probably want to check out. It's really cool if you're into graphics. Um, but they stole the IDE or, or borrowed or forked or however you want to think about it. Code reused the IDE from processing. Um, and in processing, it's a graphical environment and you're focused on drawing things. So there were sketches. So your programs became sketches. Um, no big deal. Just you'll see it and you'll wonder why. Um, so there's two functions that are important when you do your Arduino. There's setup and loop. And setup is just what your pin assignments are, what your baud rates are for your serial, whatever things you need to set up for your sketch to run. And then loop just runs forever. So you can, you know, think of main surrounding both of those, or excuse me, main kind of being your loop, sort of. Um, so the basic blinking light is your, you know, kind of hello world. You know you've got to blink it. And for me, when I realized Arduino was special was when I was fixing ramen noodles. And I already had my Arduino hooked up, had the IDE installed, you know, right? So it's all there. But I dropped the, the, uh, the noodles into the boiling water and went back to my dining table and downloaded the sketch. And it was blinking. And I tweaked the code, made it blink faster and slower, and added a button, 
I'm like, this is really cool. And then the three minute timer went off telling me my ramen noodles were done. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. Um, so anyway, so this is the, the blink sketch that is from the examples, right? So you'll see that um, standard comment notation for C++, um, you, you can do, you know, this style or single line, multi-line style or single line style. We're gonna set up, we're gonna say pin number 13 is an output pin, and then we're going to loop forever. We're gonna digitally write to pin 13. We're gonna raise it high so it comes on. We're gonna wait for a while. We're going to take it low, whoo, off it goes. We're gonna delay for a while and we're just gonna keep going forever and it'll just start blinking an LED at us. And while well, a lot of people are like, woo, an LED. Well, once you realize that the LED is just a proxy for anything else you wanna turn on and off, then it gets to be a lot more interesting. So, you know, there you go. And again, I forgot that I actually made the code a little more readable. But okay, um, I even broke it out for you. So Formata is an abstraction um, similar to MIDI a little bit. Um, I'm not a MIDI guy, so I'm kind of faking that a little bit, regurgitating what I've been told. Um, but anyway, there's applications. This one was obviously from my Mac, but there's others that just give you um, a quick interface. And it, when you run for the Formata sketch on the Arduino, you can go and tweak all this stuff. And so now you have a pretty fast way to start hacking at your stuff and not even have to write a whole lot of code. So you can be testing more at the hardware level rather than um, the Arduino level. And it makes sense for your project, what you're doing. Where, where can you do the debugging and whatnot? But anyway, so um, for the Perl world, there's device formata. So now I want to actually um, bring something up and down. So I've, there's the formata sketch that would be downloaded to the Arduino. Then I run this program, which would basically blink, and I hope it makes sense to everybody why the LED would blink. Um, it's unfortunately not on CPAM, but it is on GitHub, which is the next best thing, um, and maybe even better. So um, you can check that out. So uh, there's a few ways that you can connect. I'm gonna show you two, but there's more. Um, but we're gonna do serial and ethernet. Um, so we're gonna do a, a blink over serial, right? So um, this is kind of, well, this is not, this is very important, right? Um, you wanna make sure that you're getting your baud rate set up correctly. So this is on your um, Arduino side, but you're gonna say, hey, pin 13 is the, the interesting pin here. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and tell it it's an output pin. We're gonna wait for serials available. If we see a one, we're gonna come high and turn it on. And I'm just doing some debugging here, so we'll see it in the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE. And yes, the Arduino monitor from the IDE could certainly be screen or anything else that you wanna read from. I actually use screen, but a lot. But anyway, on and then digital right uh, low to turn it back off and we delay. And so now we're, we're blinking over serial um, if we're, we get stuff. So the quick whoop. So the first quick way to test that is from the Arduino monitor, and this is within the Arduino IDE, so you get this little thing. And this is where the baud rate stuff matters, right? So you wanna make sure this matches up to what you told the Arduino to work at. But you put, this is your input box, and you send it to the Arduino, and this is the results the Arduino sends you. Pretty simple stuff. I mean, any terminal will work, but the serial monitor is just there in the IDE, and you're already there anyway, hacking, so it's handy. So um, it's Perl, right? Um, so you can, all this stuff up to the break is just kind of cargo way cult, set up the serial connection. This is the important part, right? One, whoop. We made the LED come on, and we could obviously loop around and do that more to make it actually blink. Um, so one of the examples, uh, or one of the things I'm working on at home is a happy loop, because I like to be happy. Doesn't often happen, but I like to be happy. Um, so, so one of the things that makes me sad is when I lose my keys, right? We've all lost our keys. So we definitely have to have script, you know, scripts to help us with that. Um, so, um, but I can fix that with an Arduino and a little bit of programming, right? So a little Perl code always helps out. So, um, Whatever you want applies here, right? I'm using it, uh, a test framework within Perl to do this. Um, so basically I'm using a package called test mechanize to hit a URL that I will get off the command line. And then I'm looking for text that says, my keys are home, my keys are not home. But I'm also going to check first to see, well, should my keys even be home? 
right? And you can hand wave it how you want to do that, but maybe you're going to check your Google Calendar through the Google API because you keep you know, your schedule up to date and it knows you're at work. So your kids aren't supposed to be at home, you're at work, right? Um, but anyway, um, the way I'm kind of doing setting it up, the real version at home is where it could actually snooze as well, right? So don't nag me about this for another 30 minutes because I'm at the bar drinking scotch. So anyway, so that you can run this um, with a prove command or other stuff, but the prove is pretty good. Um, this is just the Perl testing framework stuff. So anything up to the dot dot are arguments to prove. Anything after the dot dot are arguments to the script that's being run, which is a really cool little thing in Perl, um, if you like the testing framework. And so you get results back like this. So my keys are not home, and it just does a text comparison that says, hey, the keys are not home. Look at that. And then if it worked and the keys are home, you get output like this. And of course, the um, exit values are true and false, so you can actually you know, pipe these things along on the command line and do whatever you want in shell. Um, put it in cron, you know, whatever. Um, that little thing is called the airs dotl, which who knew? Um, anyway, so the Arduino code on that, so they have a web server example right in the IDE. Um, it's it's uh, creatively enough called web server. And all of this is just kind of setting up your connection. Again, cargo culty stuff. Oh, I actually have this on a little sl different slide with color coding that makes it harder to read. We'll go back. All right, so um, you definitely need to tweak the IP number. If you're running multiple Arduinos on your network, you definitely want to tweak the MAC address as well. Um, so just remember that. It's not like I've ever forgotten to do that. Um, what port you're going to be running your web server on. And the rest of this, you're really not going to probably touch. And down here, you're really not going to touch. But this little part in the middle, um, by default, it's going to iterate through your analog connections and tell you what the readings are and dump it out to your, um, you know, as a web page. So that's the little bit we're going to fiddle with. Um, and we're going to inject this. We're going to read the button state of a particular button pin, which I guess I should have given an assignment to. Um, and we're going to say that we know where the keys are or we don't based on the button state. Um, and so then you can hit it with a web server or a web browser. Um, and it says, hey, I know where the keys are. Hey, I don't know where the keys are or whatever. Um, and that's really bad, but um, I just have two little um, conductors sticking out there where I can hang a metal key ring um, so my keys are there, which I have a blacksmith making me something more attractive because what I have is not wife friendly. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, so another problem I've, I've solved and I'm pretty happy with is my doorbell. So one of my problems I have is I live in a really cool neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh and I have lots of really cool neighbors and I'm seldom home and I get packages delivered because I ordered cool stuff and I wasn't home to get it. Dang. So I fixed that with the script. So now um, when you ring my doorbell, um, it will actually send me a text message. So in this case, I am, this is just the little stupid Perl side of things, right? It doesn't really matter how I send code on the Perl side. I'm sure you can all send email. Um, but on the Arduino side, now I have to, um, I mean, it's C++, right? So I need to give a, a signature declaration in void. I need now two IP numbers because I need the IP number of the Arduino itself and the web server that I'm going to hit. And then I also need to know what port I'm going to hit on that web server. Oops, a little quick. And so then we're going to set up the connection. And we're going to loop forever, and we're just going to read, and it's uh, pretty much what you saw before, but now with the keys, but now we're actually going to um, be a web client and hit a web server, um, which is done in the function ding dong, um, which is just very simple. I run a little script that tells me, hey, someone's at my door, which is cool. Um, that's the, the uh, little thing I built for um, testing the network. So that's the RJ45 um, Ethernet wired up with a relay in the middle. 
which is cool stuff to know. Like I, I didn't even know these things were so handy until I started poking around. Um, and that was the relay. So a couple other things. There's Patch Bay. Once you get rocking and rolling with this stuff, you'll maybe you have a logging application that you want to start logging data to and have some cool stuff. Um, you want to log weather wherever you are and share open data with the world. Patch Bay can help you do that. Um, there's also ThingSpeak, which is kind of like Facebook for your devices. So uh, for some friends of mine from IO Bridge started this, which is a really cool thing. So really what I should have been using um, in the doorbell example is let ThingSpeak actually have sent my email, which is cool, which I'll probably tweak later. But that's worth checking out. Um, so there's other stuff. One of the things that really has me excited right now um, is, and I kind of alluded to that with the whole jQuery mobile, um, with having these touchscreen interfaces that you could interface with something like an Arduino. Um, there's, a, there's an iPhone application called Wow Keys, uh, which it's not very wow, but it's kind of useful. And all it does is it maps. It gives you um, a basic keypad like this that you can assign whatever kind of graphics you want to any of these buttons. You can't rearrange these buttons or anything, but buttons are where they are. But what you do is you assign images to that, and it can be from the stock images or it can be your own images. And then you do the Mac PC thing, which is wine endings, of course. Um, tell it what port and what IP number to hit, and you assign a bit of text to each one of those buttons, and it will then send that text over. So now you have a touch screen interface into your Arduino, which is pretty cool. So one of the projects I have is to actually take that idea and redo it with jQuery mobile. So it's a web touch screen thing. So it's like, wow, jQuery mobile keys. Um, so what, I'm sure, anybody, everybody familiar with this graph? Anyone not know this, right? So some people here may not like Microsoft, and I think this is partly why, right? So obviously the Balmer curve here is indicating that everyone's blood alcohol concentration just programming skill level is the same. No, I, I highly doubt that, right? Some people need a little more scotch to write better code. Some people don't need any scotch to write code, right? So um, we can fix that with Arduino, right? So a friend of mine wrote a, made a breath a wiser shield. So you can actually get a, a blood alcohol, sort of. Um, you know, it's all relative, right? But you can get a, a reading of your intoxic intoxicity, how drunk you are. I'm not, um, which is cool, right? So you, you get one of these. So clearly you have a breathalyzer, shield, and Arduino, some git commit hooks, and then you know we can get to some better code, right? Because if you're on a really good project, you have a good testing framework, right? So you know whether or not the commit actually broke a bunch of stuff because you're doing continuous integration, right? And if it was too bad and you log that with the... Um, the blood alcohol reading, then eventually you just start rejecting commits just based completely on blood alcohol, right? So anyway, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that would be fun. Anyway, so who has questions, comments, projects? Who's doing cool stuff? Thing, thing, thing speak, yep. Nobody, it was all... It was all perfectly clear to everyone. You're all going to go order your own Arduinos and change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, so here's what I'm saying. You're saying middle schoolers can program C++ and do physical computing, and it's easier than programming Python? Is that what I just heard? No, no. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, they are coding C++, right? Which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So um, I have this dream. As I mentioned, I'm trying to start, uh, we're starting up a maker fair in Pittsburgh. So after that, or during that, I'm going to try to genesis a project um, to teach every kid in Pittsburgh, not me personally, uh, but Arduinos, right? And, and while I certainly am not misguided enough to think that every kid is going to take their little Arduino and live forever and be happy, um, a lot of them are going to think it's the dumbest thing in the world. I didn't get that. But just that kind of exposure, I think, is going to be pretty exciting. A lot of kids think football is stupid, too, but we make them play it. So. Come on. Anyway, I have a whole bunch of show and tell stuff. I have books you can take a look at. Yeah. I'm going to definitely go with uh, yes. <laughs> can so what I'm hearing is, can evil be done with an Arduino? Yes. No. I, I don't know specifically, but I, I'm going to go with yes. Right. I mean, it's cool stuff. Yeah. Is, that, is, there, is the Arduino actually just doing interpreter code? Or is, that, is, it, are you actually, is it running an interpreter? And no, no. I mean, it, it, no, it's, it's compiled with GCC and sent over, you know, for... Um, at metal code, it's a, it's a microcontroller. So it's an ARM CPU. Uh, it's a it's a at what is the latest one? It's an it's an Atmel. This is where I fall down. Yeah, it's AVR stuff. Yeah, I forget the numbers. So I honestly try very hard not to pay attention because it doesn't really matter to me. Like once I bump up against a problem with it, I'll just add another one. Because the projects I do, I'm not gonna go put, uh, maybe something will change, right? But the, the projects I do, I don't put the Arduino off in isolation. He's got access to the internet. He's got access to stuff, right? He'll have a DD wart sitting there. He'll have something, right? I'm not too worried about overburdening a little Arduino because if, I'm probably doing it wrong in, in the way I do things if I am burdened the Arduino too much. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, there's Wi-Fi there's wi Shield. There's Bluetooth, there's Wi-Fi, there's cell phone, there's all kinds of stuff. So the cell phone stuff is cool, right? You, you want to do data logging of something somewhere. Um, so monitoring temperature of a river or flow of a river or, or whatever, and then you just use the cell, like get a SIM card and put it in the shield. That's good stuff. Yeah. They can be. Well, if you prototype something and you want to say take mass produce it or something like that, is there some sort of technique or something out there that you could go to or that would kind of make it run on something? Absolutely. So there's actually a guy I was talking to at Texas Linux Fest um, who is with their maker, one of their, I think they have two hacker spaces in Austin, and he was with one of them. <laughs> So he's, uh, it's open source hardware, right? So he's actually going to get the Arduino Unos at about a, I think he said a $17 price point for those. But I mean, there's actually Bordinos, right, that you can make where you can just basically build it on a breadboard, you know, for sub $10, right? I mean, the chip itself, I think, is five if you just buy the chip itself. So, I mean, there are, so I mean, I mean the brains are in the chip and the rest is just supporting stuff. Come on, people are doing cool stuff. What do you want to do? You want to come look at something? There's stuff up here. Yeah, um, there is a, I can't think of the name of it at the moment, but there's, the, you know, the, the four, the, the, you had the pod copter? The slide window. There you go.
It's awesome. Yeah, one of the things that has um, attracted me to Arduino is, is a lot of the culture. I mean, a lot of the microchip and the PIC type folks, they look at your circuit and they're like, whoa, your thing's blinking, but you didn't put an, a resistor in there, you're gonna burn out your LED, and they're really looking at it from an EECS purist side of the world where the Arduino community is more embracing, like, hey, awesome, you got it going. Let's, let's keep going, right? I was on the mailing list and there's like this great discussion going on about what they, how they want to deal with string processing, right? Because it kind of sucks in C, right? And then when you've got an artist who knows really nothing about null termination or any of this stuff, right? And they want to go grab a Twitter feed and slam it into some project and do something, and now they're fighting with, you know, all kinds of weird stuff that they don't understand. So they're trying to figure out how to make a better string processing library that's small enough to fit on the Arduino, but they don't want to put it in core because not everybody's going to do it. And then where does it go? To probably the Ethernet library, but maybe not. So anyway, there's all this usability at the programming level for the Arduino that they're really trying to make it friendly, which is, I think, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So I haven't looked at much what, what Google announced at Google I.O. with Android and Arduino. Have you looked at that yet to see what's there? Like, should I be excited or is it all that much? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a little scratch-like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So for those of you who didn't catch that, um, our, our Google I/O at, at Google I/O they released uh, what did they call it the the Android Arduino Dev Kit or something. Anyway, there's some kind of yeah, it's some kind of Arduino Android love. Right, and so they're working with the App Inventor stuff, so you can do the whole drag and drop for making Android apps, which or that work with Arduino, which is kind of cool. Which I think will be interesting for kids because it's supposed to be Scratch-like. So, and there's a lot of kid programming things based around MIT Scratch. Anything else? Come on, I, I drug stuff here from Pittsburgh for you folks. I mean, come on, come. I know it's the end of the day, but feel free to take a look at some of it. But um, it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, I, I literally do buy a lot of my stuff from Spark Fun. Um, I like Lady Ada, Maker Shed. I appreciate them because of their relationship with Make and what they're trying to do in the community. But I honestly feel are charging a little more than they need to be, right? Um, but. What I really wanted the Maker Shed to be was, um, let's see, it's off. What I really wanted Maker Shed to be like, um, for the blog site, right? To be like, okay, I wrote this really cool blog thing up, right? And, and here's the bomb for what I made in Maker Shed. Um, you know,
What about this? I can help with like that. It. We have the same problem. What would happen if you did I this? You gave me a I good idea. problem. How do you do that? It's like this. Well, I disagree with that. Let's put the word out. Let's put the word out. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. WebOS, an OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices, HP Slate and WebOS, HP.